Violence in Cameroon is escalating as the conflict between the military and armed separatists intensifies. An Amnesty International report points the finger at both sides. It says government forces have tortured people and destroyed villages while groups wanting autonomy for the Anglophone minority have killed military personnel and burnt down schools. Now this latest spiraling of violence goes back decades as Tommy Oladipo now explains. <laughs> Cameroon is in crisis, but the international community isn't paying attention. For months, the army and separatist militants have been clashing. This is pushing the country closer and closer to a civil war. Here's why. The people in Cameroon's northwest and southwest regions are English-speaking, and they make up about one-fifth of the entire population. Away from the Commonwealth in West Africa, the Cameroons. In the colonial era, Cameroon was a German territory, but after the First World War, it was split between Britain and France. After independence, the two regions united to form one nation with two official languages. For decades, the English speakers have complained of neglect by the French speakers, including Paul Biya, who's been president since 1982. So the problem here is not just about language, and it doesn't mean that everyone from the English region is fluent in English, or same with the people in the French regions. The main point is the economic gap. There's been less development in the Anglophone areas when compared to the Francophone parts. So what do the Anglophone people want? For some, federalism. They want better allocation of resources. Others are calling for a complete split from Cameroon to form an independent state called Ambazonia. In October 2016, lawyers and teachers in that part of the country went on strike for months. They complained that the French language was being forced on them. So they led Anglophone campaigners to the streets, but the government struck back. It cut off internet supply for three months and clamped down on protests. But these images filtered out. Human rights groups say police used excessive force to suppress these demonstrations, even killing up to 40 people and civilians have accused government forces of random arrests, lengthy detentions without charge, and sexual abuse. So groups of militants kicked off a violent campaign in revenge. They've been battling the army and claiming they've killed dozens of soldiers. Meanwhile, tens of thousands of people have been displaced as a result of the fighting. But don't expect any international response just yet. There are so many other unresolved conflicts around the region, including the threat of Boko Haram in northern Cameroon. Right now, neither the government nor the rebels are showing any signs of backing down. So there's bound to be more bloodshed before things change. Tommy Uladipo reporting there. Let's bring in Ellie Smith. He's a freelance journalist who joins me from Douala in Cameroon. Ellie, Amnesty International is calling on the Cameroonian government to hold those committing crimes accountable. These are soldiers and separatists. What's the likelihood of that happening at all? I don't think it's, it can happen because the Cameroonian government thinks that, thinks that punishing uh, erring uh, soldiers who break down the morales of the troops fighting in West Cameroon. And on the other hand, there is no way the government can lay hands on the separatist rebels or restorationists, as the Anglophone may want them to be called. Obviously, then we have a situation here and a crisis. What is the solution? The solution lies in what most of us have been thinking, which is to dialogue, because the reason why this crisis, which is cyclical, is on is simply because the foundation under which this country was created in 1961 has not been respected, or it's not been respected. That's the reason why today uh, English-speaking Cameroonians, some of them have taken up arms. Uh, when I spoke to you a little earlier, you talked about sanctions of some sort that could be effective. Of course, yes, there should be a kind of policy of naming and shaming, followed by sanction that is frozen, freezing the accounts of those who are perpetuating these violence. Most of them are abroad and at home, security officials and politicians or government officials who are fueling the violence should also be banned from traveling. That way, I think they'll be forced to come up to a negotiating table. Without that, I think the violence is going to continue. Well, there are those who fear that uh, if the Anglophone side continues to ask or seek autonomy, 
this really will not end? All this fighting, all these killings will not end? No. Those who say like that, I think they are just being dishonest. The problem is that two countries came and united together. Uh, that is the 1961 uh, constitution of Cameroon made the Anglophone part an autonomous part within the Republic of Cameroon. Why would people say that? No, I think the problem is, and that's not only Cameroon, all over Africa, problems do arise simply because people fail to respect the basic rights or the basic constitution. It is not the problem in Anglophone Cameroon is different from that in, of Francophone Cameroon. So I think the solution lies in going on to the negotiation table again and then going back to the pre-1961 uh, that is 1961 agreement. I'm just wondering whether you have also wondered really why there's no regional, there's no country regionally uh, that has reacted to these or even attempted to mediate this, this situation. Yes, the country that was susceptible or is susceptible of doing that is Nigeria, because Nigeria knows the situation better than other countries. But the other countries like Congo, uh, Equatorial Guinea, they cannot do anything because they're much more dictatorial regimes and French-speaking oriented. But Nigeria doesn't do anything simply because the leadership of Nigeria is no longer pan-Africanist oriented. Uh, and then there is also another thing to the discharge of Nigeria. Nigeria has her own number of problems, internal nationalist tendencies. If they give a helping hand to what is going on in Anglophone Cameroon, they might see people like the Odua or the Biafran uh, pressing the same demands. But if they don't do that, my fear is that if instability continues so long in West Cameroon, it will invariably affect Nigeria. So Nigeria has to do something. All right, Ellie Smith, thank you very much indeed for your thoughts there. Thank you. You're welcome.